What's up you guys? It's Katie. A few videos ago I mentioned my love for Style Nanda's aesthetic and surprisingly enough quite a few of you seem to share that in common with me and were keen to see me recreate some of their key styles. Hence why we're here today. I was actually first introduced to them through Jenim's channel way before I even started my own YouTube channel but if you guys aren't familiar with them they're a super popular K fashion brand that honestly stocks a lot of basic and timeless classics but they have a very distinct signature when it comes to the styling process which is something we can all take inspiration from and actually just apply to the basics we already have in our wardrobes. I've put together 10 looks that I think embody different aspects of the brand, but before we even get to the clothing, I feel like we need to set the overall mood. So starting out with the backdrop. Their photo shoot locations are often just as aesthetic as the actual outfits themselves, but the cute cafe vibe obviously isn't exactly a possibility at the moment, so I tried putting together a neutral yet homely feel. I've actually been getting a few questions about where I film recently, and the answer is just my house. I've turned a room into my own little studio, and I just like to switch up the backdrop depending on the mood of the video. Okay, the next step to try and tackle is makeup. K-Beauty has been influencing global makeup trends for years now and has definitely impacted my everyday routine, so today's look may seem somewhat familiar with my usual warm tones and copious amounts of blush. So I certainly don't have the clear skin of the 3CE models, although fortunately you did catch me on an unusually good day, I must say, but I still started with a poor blurring primer before going in with my new love, the Pony Effect Cushion Foundation. That sounds like it's sponsored, it is not. I have just been hunting for a holy grail foundation for what feels like centuries. For some reason, the cushion foundation seems to give a more flawless and airbrush finish to the skin without looking cakey, which is the ideal recipe for me. Any blemishes and under eye circles still visible, I cover up with the matching concealer from the same line before setting it all in place with a translucent powder. I don't know why I'm just now suddenly realizing I have no idea what or why I'm doing this. Um, I'm no beauty guru, so a tutorial just seems strange and I'm awkward at voiceovers at the best of times. So um, I don't know, maybe it's just ideas on products you might want to try or something. I'll try and keep it quick, but do feel free to skip through to the outfits portion if you want to. If you, if you are sticking around though, prepare to be mind blown by the groundbreaking idea of, wait for it, blending a warm neutral shade all over the lid and through the crease. Yes, an old faithful, I know, but definitely on brand for today's theme. I tried to keep it soft around the edges and swept it underneath the lower lash line as well. I also just shade a little bit under the inner corner. I find it helps the highlight pop more as I pack on some shimmer. I'm finishing off the eyes with a subtle wing liner with just a minimal angle that I'm apparently incapable of doing in frame before topping it off with some mascara, which honestly practically covers up all the work that we've just done, so fantastic. Moving on to the cheeks, which is always my favorite part. As you may have noticed, I'm usually fairly heavy handed to the point where I'm often mistaken for being severely sunburnt, but for today's look, I've toned it down. I'm not placing product across my nose. Instead, I bronzed the face and went in with an orange toned blush to the apples of the cheeks, keeping the placement high almost under the eyes for a really youthful flush. To ensure we have the glow, I tap on some highlighter, but I find it always looks a little bit too harsh, so I like to take a clean brush and just diffuse the edges and blend all of the cheek product together to keep that airbrush finish we were aiming for. Finally, it's time to try and make a decision on a lip color, and I actually ended up using two to achieve that gradient lip trend. I start off with a neutral tone all over the lips in a very creamy, velvety texture. That way, it's easier to blend out the edges with a clean sponge just to avoid any harsh lines. And then I pick up a more vibrant product, still in the same color family, to apply to the center of the lips. I usually just continue to blend and dab until I'm happy with that popsicle-inspired look, which sometimes is a long process. <laughs> Well, if you thought I was lackluster with the makeup, I'm sorry to say I'm even worse at hair. And also, yes, you don't need to point out my terrible regrowth. I honestly chose the worst possible time to dye my hair. But 
Moving on, luckily for us, the styles are actually fairly simple. I just went through with a straight knot, slightly twisting in towards the face on the ends, just to create a really subtle flick. My bangs are a little too overgrown to nicely frame the face, so after a quick little trim off camera, I secured them in a roller just to add volume and once again, that subtle inwards flick I'm apparently obsessed with. Another popular choice the models are often styled in is that really messy wave moment, which I adore. But personally, I think this is slightly better suited to longer hair, at least when it comes to my round face shape, especially if I know I'll be wearing a hat. I don't know, it just does no favors for me. But on its own, it can create a really dreamy, romantic vibe that perfectly matches the softer makeup look. Finally, it is time to get into some outfit inspo and the first look is something that's actually very prominent on their website at the moment and it's these chunky knit sweaters layered over a midi length dress and I feel like this is really just bringing winter and summer and meshing them together rather than going for a spring wardrobe if you guys know what I mean. So I tried to continue that theme throughout even down to the shoes by teaming these knit socks with the sandals. I decided to add that button up shirt underneath just so we could have the collar peeking out and tie that green around the face as well rather than it just being so bottom heavy. Honestly with the accessories though you could have gone for a contrasting color I feel like that's something they would often do but I love a matchy matchy moment and I feel like my hair is the contrast. For my second look, we're throwing a few different trends together. Starting out with the base, I wanted to go for these exaggerated cuff jeans and also this beautiful baby blue shade, which is perfect for spring. I'm actually adding another fitted layer, which isn't something I would typically do, but this ruched detailing adds more texture to the look and also having the blue still peek out adds more dimension. The final layer is this tweed vest, which is bringing us even more texture as well as pattern. And this is one of those timeless patterns as well. So you could wear this look a year ago, today, or in a year's time, and you're still gonna look chic. I kept the accessories fairly simple, going for that really classic vibe we were creating, which is an option that Style Nanda goes for, but on the other end of the spectrum, you could try and go for that odd pairing mentality as well. Look 3 is actually a recreation of an outfit they posted on Instagram. When I first saw this a few months ago, it actually influenced me to buy the exact skirt. So we had the base sorted and then I was just playing around with items I already had in my wardrobe, including the tie dye top, which obviously is a huge trend internationally for like the last year now. Overall, this look is definitely more within my comfort zone. I love it when they dabble in a bit more of the street style sort of elements, but duality is key key when it comes to Style Nanda, they can serve you any type of look any day of the week. So I thought it'd be fun to keep the same base, but try and flick the switch a little bit and give it a more preppy vibe. Pleated skirts and blazers are a go-to, but at the moment we're really seeing a lot more of these vests come into play as well. You guys know I am CEO of vests, so I'm all for this movement. And I can't believe that I actually thrifted this one because it looks like it came as a matching set. To reach those peak prep girl vibes, I threw on my long socks, headband, and made sure to tuck my shirt in all the way around. Look 4 is taking us back to some of their more feminine styling with a lot of floral dresses. This one I've had in my wardrobe for quite some time. You guys are probably sick of seeing it, but it is definitely my favorite, especially since I dyed my hair. I feel like it matches perfectly. Recently, I've seen a lot of looks with the sweater effortlessly thrown over the shoulders, and I guess it's taking from that preppy sort of inspo again, but I'm actually really into it. I will admit it would look softer if it was a knitwear item instead, but but this pink hoodie is all I had to work with and I think by teaming it up with the sneakers it actually gives a cool casual vibe. But if you're not feeling the sneakers, then another popular look is teaming the shorter hemlines with longer boots. You guys know I practically live in these white cowboy boots, which are from Style Nanda. I have definitely gotten my money's worth. I teamed it up with the same dress and then threw on this thrifted little baby pink tote bag. 
Switching gears now, I'm going for the ultimate cozy girl vibes, kind of like you're huddling around a campfire on a cold autumn night. We are actually going into fall here in Australia, so I thought this was pretty fitting. Of course, the absolute essential to this look is the overly exaggerated puffer jacket. I really love that this one has that subtle plaid detailing to it because it just brings a little bit more to the look that otherwise is very basic. Honestly, it kind of feels like it could be part of a Yeezy season collection as well. For accessories, you'll want to add any headwear of your choice. And also a small detail is the styling of the socks. I've noticed that typically they tuck the pants into them rather than the other way around, which small details like that for a simple look is really what keeps it on brand. Of course, they're in the middle of releasing their spring collections and there's so many beautiful pastel tones. And instead of teaming them back with neutral shades, they're actually just pairing them together for a really nice color blocking effect. I went for this mint and lilac combo, which I think is very complimentary. Both items are actually more on the baggy side of things, which I think really plays into the sort of loungewear we're looking to wear at the moment. But having that pop of pastel really just lightens the mood. The the slight ruching up one side does bring a bit more shape to the outfit and it's a detail we're seeing a lot of so expected to be big for spring. I topped it off with a jacket and boots but perhaps a pair of cute slippers would be more practical these days. We're going back to basics yet again because honestly they just do it so well so we're breaking out that warm neutral color palette as well as your favorite pair of jeans. It doesn't matter what silhouette they are just whichever ones you find most flattering. The sweater vest is an absolute staple in both mine and Style Nanda's wardrobe apparently so I'm throwing on this cropped version. Typically I like the looser baggier styles but because we are using some bulkier layers in just a second I think this will streamline the look better. When it comes to timeless outerwear options, the trench coat is one of the go-tos. It's been around for such a long time, but still looks so elegant and stylish and it tops off the outfit perfectly. We've got ourselves another two-in-one look though, so I'm quickly changing over my headwear accessory. I feel like the Style Nanda girls are always wearing a hat. The Baker Boy cap is just one of many. From one timeless outerwear piece to another, we have the oversized blazer. The first one I ever purchased was actually from Style Nanda like six years ago I want to say and I still wear it to this day so it's something I definitely correlate with their brand. This one however is thrifted along with the bag that is cinching it in and I will leave all of the outfit details by the way down below in the description box. This next one might not be everyone's cup of tea, but for some reason has become my absolute go-to over the last month, so I really wanted to throw it in there. It's going back to that pastel color blocking once again with the top, and particularly I have seen a lot of green and yellow tones on their feed recently, as well as these cute little cardigans, which let's face it, are everywhere. The polarizing element, however, is the length of the shorts. These longer styles have become increasingly popular recently, and I can definitely see the hype because they're very comfortable. These used to be a pair of jeans that I just cut off to my desired length, but I know some people are not a fan, including my boyfriend, but I continue to wear this to no end. Case in point because I am keeping those babies on for the next look as well, but switching over to a button up shirt because I feel like this is another staple of theirs, particularly in these paisley bandana style prints recently. This totally reminds me of Namjoon's sort of aesthetic as well, but also low key kind of like dad vibes too. I don't know, I think it's the cap and the chunky sneakers, but they do often style these caps, I think, when they're going for a more casual look, so. I think is quite fitting. And while this is quite a simple outfit, by just tweaking how you actually wear the button up, you can get a completely different look. One of my favorites is to actually wear only one sleeve and then wrap the excess one around, tuck it in, and it looks like a completely different shirt. Or an easier trick is just the half button and tuck. Okay, rounding us off at look 10 is one base, but multiple outfits and pretty much just a brain dump of inspiration. I didn't fit into any of the other outfits. 
You guys know I'm usually a girl all about color, but I know that isn't for everyone. A lot of people like to stick to the neutrals. So hopefully this is just a bit of inspiration on how you can easily switch up that beige monochromatic palette. I'm mostly just cycling through different knitwear options with patterns, textures, and also a few different coats and jackets as well. That felt like a longer video than usual, so thank you for sticking around. Let me know if you enjoy this sort of format and also hit me up in the comments if there are any other brands or just aesthetics in general you wanna see me try out next. But otherwise, I'll just catch you in my next one, maybe even over on my Instagram, which is at Steal the Spotlight. Bye.